We have a pretty small group here at the studio in Durham, and uh, that's got a lot of great things about it that we really like. You know, for example, um, we're at a size where we can all go around every Friday and look at everyone else's monitor. This is actually the smallest production team I've ever been with outside of pre-production, where you know you might end up with 15 people or sometimes as small as like eight, 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 ten people or something like that. There's just a greater chance of people casually talking to each other, or informally talking to each other, and information getting pass from person to person that way. I feel like the culture that we have at the studio in Durham is, is kind of a hybrid in a lot of ways. Uh, definitely the foundation is, is pure insomniac. At the same time, we've got just a little bit of a startup vibe out here. You know, we're, we're in this like, um, kind of kind of low-tech office space in a lot of ways. And it's like when you get your first car as a teenager and that car is like a 78 Impala and it, it um, gives you this great feeling of freedom because you can just kind of wreck it a little bit. That's kind of how we go through things here. We just throw ourselves in and, and kind of do whatever it takes to get things done. We're going down. We opened up the studio here in January of 2009, and we've been working on All For One since, since that very day. Uh, we knew that we wanted to make a Ratchet title that was all about cooperative play even back then. But some of the earliest discussions le that led to All For One were talking about getting Ratchet and Clank on the screen as playable characters at the same time. <laughs> in true insomniac fashion, like once we kind of got to the point where we had that in place and we decided to do that, we're like, we really have to add two more characters. Uh, uh, she was taking a memo. Uh, no. I mean, we knew Captain Quark had to be the third, and there were a lot of discussions about who the fourth would be, and I, I can't for the life of me remember who suggested Dr. Nefarious. One of those times where somebody throws out an idea and you just know, oh, that's perfect. We absolutely have to do that. The story in All for One is, is kind of a little bit of a mystery. We've put four characters who don't really like each other at all into a situation where they're forced to work together. And part of the reason they're forced to work together is that they're on a, an unfamiliar planet called Planet Magnus, and they've been brought there by a, a strange uh, galactic entity called Ephemeris, the Creature Collector. So much of what you're learning as a player as you play through is the origin of that enormous Ephemeris spacecraft and the backstory of the planet that you're on. I stood atop Zuzo Fields and watched in horror as Commander Spog and his armies lay waste to Uzo City. Well, for the comic series, we really wanted to answer the question of how did Dr. Nefarious survive, what's he been up to, and how do our heroes arrive in the, in the situation that they're in at the very beginning of All for One. So I thought it'd be funny to have Captain Quark become president of the galaxy, because really, like, where else can he go from everything that he's done? He's got to fail upwards and become president of the galaxy, right? We definitely got carried away with the amount of dialogue that we needed to write in this game, but we were having so much fun writing for Captain Quark and Dr. Nefarious that I ended up going over budget within like the first six months of the project. We ended up with, I think, double or maybe even triple what our initial budget was set out to be because it's just so much fun having these characters interact with each other. A faulty ion switch, a malfunctioning tether pin, so many ways to explain why our president fell to his doom. Ratchet, Nefarious is plotting to assassinate me again. Nefarious, stop plotting to assassinate Quark. We really wanted to make a feel not only like they were fighting together, but they were, all, they were also fighting with each other. So we've got all sorts of uh, conversations that play between all four characters that really add to the feeling of this sort of ragtag group of heroes that are thrown together against their own will in order to fight their way off this planet. For the sake of our own survival and for drama, we must set aside our petty squabbles and act as a singular unit. 